Walker, Riley, and myself are 100 miles northeast of Fairbanks in the White Mountain Range. And we are here for the opening day of the Steve's 2020 Caribou Hunt. Since this is mine and Riley's first hunt, we had to come up with a way to decide who was going to take the first shot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh my fuck. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's all you, man. Ah, all right. It's all you. We worked our way up the ridge from where our base camp was to where we had glassed several caribou earlier in the day. And this is when we met Wes. Seven more bulls. If I had my bow, I would have took them all. So it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. So did you see that cow? Yeah, she, yeah. she's right there by the pine tree. Yeah. Like I said, I'd rather we didn't ride in front of you yeah. guys, just stay in front of you guys to get these bulls. I'd rather we work something out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We came to the realization that it would be in all of our best interest if we worked together on this hunt versus working against each other. With our bivy set up, we hit the hay with the plan to get up at first light. We put a stock on several caribou, and we kept on nudging a little bit closer and a little bit closer to them. And then all of a sudden, two broke off from the herd and started running our way, which really caught me off guard because I was not ready to take a running shot. And just like that, the moment had passed. And I really started to beat myself up over this, not taking the shot because I realized it was a hundred yard easy shot. I could have taken it. But looking back now, I'm glad that I did not take it. After getting some much needed rest, we continued to hike and glass around the hillside. And we kept on looking over in one ridge over, and we kept on seeing tons and tons of caribou over there. And Walker and Riley were really set on hiking down the ridge and up and over to the next ridge. And I was quite reluctant at first, but I'm glad they convinced me. Me and Super stoked to be hiking through the forest. Yeah. Going up to that ridge, started out, can't see you now, all the way up there, we were moving, we're moving to the boo. And lovely, warm, and lovely, and I should have realized, I had no reason to be frightened, and I am ready for the storm, yes I'm ready, I am ready for the storm. As we got near the top of the ridge, we spotted one caribou skylined, and so we stopped and waited for a second. 
and then before we knew it, a ton more came pouring around. Everything was looking good until they caught wind of us. Surprisingly, once they realized we were there, they didn't seem to mind us that much. And they kept on feeding closer and closer to us. And since Riley was in a better position, I told him that he should take the first shot. Riley and Ian just shot their first caribou. We're gonna go make sure Ian's is down. Riley's is down, yeah. right over there. And there's Riley. Crazy. How you feeling? I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. That felt amazing. <laughs> dude, he just dropped. Yeah. He dropped. I wanna check out my shot. Yeah, we're gonna make sure Ian's bull's down really quick. Yeah, let's go check him out. Let's check this one out first. Yeah, dude, I couldn't see if he got one or not. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Come on, old time cowboys, and listen to my song. Please do not grow weary, I'll not detain you long. Concerning some wild cowboy. Did agree to go and spend the summer pleasant yes. on the trail of the buffalo. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Well, <laughs> found myself. He's an animal. <laughs> oh man. Well known, famous drover. I'll come and walk up to me. Saying, How do you do, young feller? And how'd you like to go and spend the summer pleasant? On the trail of the buffalo. Well, me being out of work right then, to the drover I did say, It's going out on the buffalo range depends upon your pay. But if you pay good wages, transportation to and fro, I think I might go with you <laughs> to the trail of the buffalo. Of course I pay good wages and give transportation too. Oh, yeah. If you'll agree to work for me until the season's through. But if you do grow weary and you try and run away, you'll starve to death along the trail and also lose your pay. Well, with all this flattering talking, he signed up quite a train. Some ten or twelve in number, some maybe bodied men. And our trip was a pleasant one as we hit the westward road and crossed Old Boggy Creek in Old New Mexico. There are pleasures in it, and our troubles all began. A lightning storm did hit us and made our cattle run. I got all full of stickers from the cactus that did grow, and the outlaws 
waited to pick us off in the hills of Mexico. Well, the working season ended and the drover would not pay. You all have drunk too much. You're all in debt to me. But the cowboys never had heard of such a thing as a bankrupt law. Now this is what it's all about. So we left that drover's bones to bleach on the trail. Hey, I, uh, I hope everybody enjoyed this vlog. Though I've come to the realization recently that there's a good chance that not everybody did enjoy this. I realize that there are definitely people that do not enjoy or appreciate hunting as much as I do, nor fully, they might not fully understand it. And I came to this realization because I posted a picture of, from the hunting trip onto my Instagram, and I got this comment that kind of really, I don't want to say completely caught me off guard, but it was a little, it hit me kind of funny. This person left a comment saying something along the lines of, uh, hunting for fun not cool. And I was just kind of like, damn. Because I, I guess I said in my caption that I was like, it was fun, but I considered it a type two fun, meaning like it wasn't necessarily fun in the moment, but looking back, it was a good experience. It was definitely one hell of an experience, I'll tell you that much. It's gonna stick with me forever. But reading that comment directed towards me is a little bit ironic just because I made a very similar comment to Walker a couple years ago and I remember that made him quite mad because he has hunted his entire life. I guess I wanted to take a little bit to explain why I decided to do this hunt and or explain hunting to those that don't like hunting or don't know too much about it as I never had hunted before. Obviously this was my first hunt. So <laughs> this might seem the most obvious and stupid thing to say, but why I decided to do this, why I wanted to do this, is simply because I like meat. <laughs> that might seem like a bit of a stupid or arrogant answer if you don't eat meat. And behind the phrase, I like meat, there's more to it that I want to explain to why I wanted to do this hunt in the first place. And why I think other people should also consider hunting themselves. I kind of have three reasons for why I like hunting, and the first off being, might be sound a little strange, but it's better for the animal. And what I mean by that is going out and hunting your own meat versus buying it from the grocery store. This animal, this caribou, lived its whole life free roaming the huge Alaskan tundra. It wasn't kept in a pen, it wasn't basically force fed corn, it wasn't pumped full of antibiotics and then taken to the slaughterhouse. They lived a free life. Also, these animals do not have, often do not have very peaceful deaths. Usually they're attacked by wolves or bears and that is probably not the best way to go versus being shot. I think Joe Rogan said this in one of his podcasts. Yeah, I'm quoting Joe Rogan right now. He described this as dipping your pinky or finger into the natural world and getting a little slice of it, I guess. And secondly, I think it's better for the environment. If I were to go to the grocery store and buy meat, I'm buying meat that's coming from some other place in the world. It has to be processed in a huge processor using tons of energy and then sealed up in plastic and flown all the way up here to Alaska. And instead, we drove a couple hundred miles out and shot the meat ourselves and we ended up with hundreds of pounds of meat that we're gonna be able to eat throughout the entire winter. And then we did all the processing ourselves. So it was all done in using pretty minimalistic amount of energy and resources to get all this meat that's gonna last us a very long time. And lastly, I think it's better for me, for people. Um, I know exactly where the meat came from. I get the satisfaction to say, hey, I shot this myself and be able to say I put in the work to get this meat and be able to feed myself with the own meat I got and feed others with the own meat I got is incredibly fulfilling, honestly. It feels great. I hope some of that makes sense and explains some of you. I know probably a good amount of you already understand this completely, but honestly, I did not for a good long while. And hopefully some people that don't eat meat or didn't fully understand it 
hopefully some of this makes some sense and I uh so yeah that is why I did this hunt and why I'm gonna continue to hunt in the future and uh I really do hope you guys enjoyed this vlog let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and if you did enjoy this video be sure to leave a like and I'll see you guys next time peace